All right, so now that we know a little bit more about this cable itself, this Category 5 cable that's used throughout this building, let's start to play that game of follow the cable. All right, so this cable would be plugged in right here. I actually have a wireless router that's plugged in right here. Uh, this cable goes into the wall, disappears into the wall. Where does it go now? Well, how do I find out a little bit more about this? Let's take this guy out. Um, I happen to know I have some tools here at my disposal. Now, if you want to try this at home, please be careful. Uh, your parents may get annoyed if you knock out their internet, or your roommates may get annoyed if you knock out their internet. Um, also, this type of cabling is what's known as low voltage cabling. So it's not as dangerous as the electrical operator right here. If I stick my finger in here and make contact with all these cables, I'm not getting the big kind of shock that I would if I stuck my cable in there and that could hurt or kill me, right? But these low voltage cables can still carry a certain amount of current, right? And in fact, this cable can be used to power a IP based telephone. So just, you know, be a little bit careful whenever you're doing something like this, all right? So this guy is a little tricky. Uh, in this case, there are screws holding this plate on. Those screws are nicely disguised back here behind the face plate. So let's like get these guys off. Happily, nobody from UBIT is around here to watch this. Um, I can start taking these screws out. Okay, got that one. And there's one more down here. Okay, check that out. Take this guy out, face plate comes off. Now, what's, what's over here, right? So behind this wall, as you might have suspected, there are more cables, okay? And these cables, if I pull this all the way out, I can see that the direction these cables go is up. And that's not that unusual. A lot of the cabling that you find around us, particularly in buildings like this, runs overhead. So cable exits like this will typically all go up the wall and then make contact with larger cable runs that go out in the hallway. And in fact, let's take a look at where that happens in this office. I'm move some things around here so that I can, so can go vertical. Again, not necessarily something you want to try every day at home, but fun to do once in a while. Let's follow this cable. Okay, so this cable started here on the wall. It's come right up here. Poke this guy out. Oh, these are tricky. Okay, there we go. All right, now look at how clean that is. No mice in Davis Hall, apparently. It's awesome. All right, so now, if Greg can pull up in here, maybe hand, hand this to me, actually. Um, let's check out what happens up overhead. Okay, so check this out. This is the cable exit for that cable that we just found the, uh, the, the wall exit for down there. And where that goes is up into here. And you can see there's this little piece of uh, tubing and there are actually, it looks to me like there are at least eight Cat5 cables that are coming out of that. Um, one thing that's interesting about typical deployments of Category 5 cable in most buildings is that all of these cables serve independent jacks. So there's actually no shared cables in a typical deployment that uses a large switch. That's unlike the electrical system where I can run a bunch of outlets from the same cable. In terms of Cat5, every cable makes a separate path all the way back to the switch. Okay, so we've seen sort of where the cables go in my office, and the next step will be to see where they go throughout the rest of the department.